like to thank you all for inviting me here to speak tonight, or today actually, it seems like tonight. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Tom Mundell. I'm in charge of tra uh, training our 38 soldiers. Uh, next slide, please. What I'm going to talk about is how we have gone from pre-2004 to where we are in the training pipeline and what have been some of the driving considerations uh, in changing uh, our training models uh, to produce 38 high-quality 38 soldiers that we have on the ground today. Next slide. Next slide. Pre-2004, uh, really for 39 Bravos and 39 Charlies, it was a four-week course uh, or two weeks of re uh, resident training with a box of books. Uh, it did not focus uh, on any culminating exercise, uh, nor was there any field time to it, and really trying to practice the craft once we had talked about the doctrinal concepts uh, really was lacking across the board. For the active component, uh, we saw a functional area qualification at the end of that uh, four-week course. Uh, there was no branch for the active component, which really caused some problems as far as officer management goes and career management. Uh, and that has since changed, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. For the most part, 39 and 30 Charlie was interchangeable uh, during this time frame. Uh, it was CA PSYOP. Uh, there was real, no real clear distinction as far as utilization in many cases for 39 Charlie or 39 Bravo. To be completely uh, functional area qualified, we saw the regional studies course as well as language training that was uh, done there, but there was no coherency in the training model. In other, in other words, these were standalone products that were muckled together to produce a functional area qualified individual at the end. Next slide. Well, 2004, uh, it was deemed that we need to relook the training pipeline and come up with a better training methodology to produce a better qualified 38. On this, we went to a nine week course that included uh, an updated curriculum across the board based on doctrinal changes that were coming from the operational forces. At this point, we had been committed in uh, combat operations for almost three years. Uh, we had some training sequencing issues that I talked about before. There was a lot lacking of a, a logical flow that did not allow us to coherently train soldiers to prepare them for the contemporary operational environments that we were expecting them to operate in. We included uh, uh, adaptive thinking and leadership, which is really focused on negotiation and mediation skills that are necessary for the 38 soldiers as they go and work in a cross-cultural environment. One of the problems with this training uh, model, though, is that we were graduating soldiers prior to full completion of the training pipeline. You would get done with the nine-week course and then would go on to uh, the additional training necessary from there and would be considered graduation complete and fully functional as a 38. Uh, for the active component, uh, we've changed that now uh, because as of 16 October we became a branch. And as a result of going from a functional area to a branch, there are more um, management requirements that are placed upon us as far as how we professionally design our force. Next slide. This is the new training pipeline that uh, we will begin, uh, begin to implement uh, two weeks from now uh, as we start uh, the beginning of our new course. We have an introduction of uh, in, uh, affairs, then we go right into the language training which becomes the cultural and language um, experience that our 38s will have prior to going on from there. The 11 week phase which will be phase three uh, incorporates adaptive thinking and leadership, all the MOS skills that are requisite with that. Uh, as well as focusing on the regional analysis part, uh, which is critical to the skill set that we're expecting to come out at the end of the training pipeline. As we go through this, the integration of our NCOs and officers is critical with this. They start out uh, in the introduction uh, through language training. Uh, in the core competency piece, they're split out where appropriate and then brought back in for the team concept across the board. At the end of this, uh, at the end of the training pipeline, all soldiers are graduation complete, and there's no additional training that's needed from there. Uh, so the perception that you, uh, you finish a nine-week course and then continue on for training, uh, we end that, we actually end the graduation, uh, you will go on and uh, go to the user unit from there. For our NCOs in this training pipeline, BNOC uh, is one of the core competencies uh, where we split out to actually ensure the professionalization of our NCO force from there. 
the logical flow for this allows us to integrate the language skills, the cultural skills, and the analytical skills that were missing in the original model that we were working on so that the culminating exercise we're able to exercise all of the skill set that's been taught for the prior 40 plus weeks of training. This was something that was lacking in the model prior to this. At the end of that, I think we're producing one of the best 38s that we have seen uh, for the well, for the training history. Uh, we have an extensive process that allows us at the end of that to not only teach the core competencies necessary for a 38 officer, an NCO, but we're able to exercise those in a true culminating exercise and prepare them prior to sending to the operational force. Now I'd like to go on to the UA, U, a USAR model. Uh, essentially the same model as we had before, but the noted difference here uh, is that it was not a functional area, it equated to branch qualification, uh, which is a distinct difference between the USAR model and, and the uh, active army model. Additionally, the regional studies and language were not a requirement for branch qualification, which has, uh, which meets the minimum standards to produce a soldier to the operational force from there as far as from a training requirement goes. Next slide. In order, in 2005, in order to ensure commonality and a common training standard across the board, this was the training model that was adopted. Uh, in 2005, the Civil Affairs course was expanded to a nine-week course to include all the competencies uh, that were being trained across the board. In order to be a fully qualified 38 for the USAR, in order to get into training, you had to have the Captain's Career Course, which is considered the basic foundation across the board of what the common skills are necessary to function in this, this area. Additionally, to be, excuse me, have a bit of a cold. In order to continue on, the Civil Affairs Qualification Course was a misnomer. Words means things. Uh, at the end of the nine-week course, there was still the requirement to go on to the, uh, the Advanced Regional Analysis training that was either nine weeks resident, nine weeks of returning to unit, and then coming back at a different time, or doing the distance learning portion, which was never act fully actualized as a result uh, from the, the SWIG. There are some problems with this model though. It's not viewed as being uh, USAR friendly. The, to go out and do nine weeks of training and then to come back and then come back and do 13 weeks of training is very difficult to get that within the, 30, uh, the 36 months uh, that was uh, envisioned in doing this model. As a result of the branch, or USAKPOC, uh, being moved out from SOF in 1 October of 06, it forced uh, a relook at how we were actually doing the training methodology uh, for our USAR component. As a result of that, this were the actions that were taken. Uh, in November of 06, it was decided that USAR was no longer part of SOF. That precipitated a series of uh, events and actions uh, by General Parker to address the USAR issue to ensure that we were producing a product that was user friendly to USAR. And as a result of that, training was changed. Next slide. This is the new uh, training pipeline for 38 USAR qualifications. It's designed to meet the, citizens, the needs of the citizen soldier across the board. Uh, it integrates the resident portions as well as the distance learning portions to allow maximum flexibility for the citizen soldier across the board. There are those uh, areas that have been identified that are key for face-to-face -face training and then those that can be done with distance learning. I think the key point here is the flexibility that, that is involved in the new training pipeline we do not lose any of the core competencies and we keep the systems analysis, but we also ensure that we execute a culminating exercise that allows us to evaluate and integrate all the skill set that's trained throughout the training pipeline. Addition with this is that the active component as well as the reserve component meet up uh, during the three week exercise to really model the same way that we do with, mo with mobilization exercises where our active component and our reserve component soldiers team get together conduct operations, rehearsals, and planning, and then we'll go on to do a culminating exercise from there to try and model a